So now let's talk about how we drive long run uh, supply curve. Um, we will analyze three uh, separate cases. Well, the first case is constant cost. What do we mean by this? Well, we mean as new firms enter to this market, well, the input prices are not going to change. They're going to stay the same. Uh, how is this possible? Well, I mean, suppose that uh, these firms who are operating in this market, remember, they need to buy inputs to produce these outputs. So like capital on labor. And so let's suppose they're operating in, in a market, in an environment where in a big city where uh, there's abundant number of uh, workers and abundant uh, amount of capital. And so uh, additional firms uh, input demand is not going to change the uh, market price for the inputs. And hence the cost functions in the long run is going to stay the same. All right. So under this assumption, let's see how we can derive the uh, uh, long run supply curve. Well, for this reason, we are going to make the following comparative static analysis, meaning we're going to fix everything and only change one thing, which is the demand curve. So let's suppose for some reason the demand shifts to the right. So the demand increases, uh, more consumers enter to this market. Well, then what will happen in the long run, in the short run and in the long run? Well, before our analysis, I have two graphs here. One graph basically represents uh, what happens in individual firm, for individual firm, and then what happens in the market. Let's suppose this market has identical firms, all right? If, if, if it is gonna make uh, your, your, your understanding, if, if it is gonna make things easier for you, assume that all the firms have exactly the same average cost and same marginal cost curve, all right? So uh, remember the long run equilibrium in a competitive uh, market means each firm is producing quantity, which is exactly, so let's call it Q initial, Q initial quantity where price equals marginal cost, which is equal to average cost. So this must be, so the zero profit condition and, and the you know, long run competitive equilibrium price. And also remember in this market, we must have enough of supply where the demand and supply intersect at that price. Because remember the competitive equilibrium price was the price where uh, supply and, and quantity supply and quantity demand are equal. All right, well, remember I said we're gonna shift the demand curve for some reason. So let's say this is the new demand curve, D new. All right, well, in this market, because it's a perfectly competitive market, this is going to be the new market price, right? P new. So this is, uh, if we need to name it, uh, this is the old price. Uh, well, also let's call this instead of QI, uh, Q alt. All right. So here, what happens is that a firm facing, remember, this is a perfectly competitive firm facing and taking this price as given. So this is the new market price. At this new price, the firm is going to operate, I'm sorry, will produce this many outputs. But remember, the profit is going to be the region where P minus AC, and AC is this level, by the way, this is AC, P minus AC times quantity new. So that means once new consumers enter to this market, or maybe uh, their wealth level increases, or maybe their taste uh, changes, but when the demand curve shifts to the right, uh, the market price will increase. That means positive profit for the operating firm. That means uh, this market is going to attract new firms. As new firms enter, uh, the input prices are going to be the fixed or constant, but uh, new firms are going to produce new outputs and that is going to shift the supply curve to the right, right? The, the, the total number of output at a given price will be higher. Well, the question is, how much is it going to shift? Well, it may shift too much because there are too many new firms entering to this market. If it enters, I'm sorry, if it shifts too much, too much meaning if under the new price, uh, I'm sorry, under the new supply, so let's suppose it shifts right here, S, 
uh, uh, new. All right. Well, here at this price, it's lower than the old price. What's going to happen? The firm, the individual firm is going to suffer some loss. It's going to make negative profit. That means some of the firms will exit the market. Don't forget, this is a perfectly competitive market. And so free entry, free exit. Uh, what's going to happen? Well, when some firms exit the market, the supply curve is going to, so the quantity supply is going to decrease. So the supply curve will shift back. So uh, along the way, the supply is going to shift back and forth, back and forth. But eventually, in the long run, it's going to become a stable. Where exactly? Well, remember, the long run equilibrium is the point where each firm is basically making zero profit. So that means the supply curve, the new supply curve, should be intersecting the demand curve at a price uh, which is equal to the old price, because this is the uh, uh, zero profit condition uh, price level. All right. So this is where the, uh, so this is Q new. This is, let's denote it capital Q, because this is the uh, market quantity. This one is individual firms quantity. All right, so this is uh, capital Q old. So what happens because of the demand increase, uh, the market price in the long run is going to stay the same, but the quantity will increase. Well, in fact, if you do this analysis for sort of a bigger shifts or, you know, maybe uh, shifting back, what's going to happen in the long run, the supply curve, so let me denote it by red, so the supply curve of this market is going to be a completely horizontal line. So it's going to be a flat line. So this is the long run supply curve of this market. When the constant, uh, when the costs, the input prices are constant, meaning new firms will, will not change the input prices and hence will not influence the average and the marginal cost curves. All right. Uh, let's look at the case where the costs increase. Well, how is or when is this possible? Well, uh, suppose that as new firms enter, uh, the new firms or the you know all, new firms and the operating firms have to compete with each other for uh, the limited number of workers that were available in the market, and so uh, that is, additional firms are going to drive up the uh, input prices. Uh, same may be uh, true uh, for the capitals, and so additional firms can actually crowd that, uh, crowd out and hence increase the input prices and hence shifts the average and the marginal cost curves for the individual firms. So that should affect the long run supply curve. How? Well, we're going to do a uh, similar analysis as we did previously. Uh, we're going to look at the initial situation where the market was in a, a perfectly competitive long run equilibrium. And then we're going to uh, tilt the demand curve and the price will change. And that will going to cause some uh, sort of uh, a, a sequence of reactions and at the end the market will in the long run reach to its new equilibrium and we are going to see where this new equilibrium will be. But for this we have three graphs. All of them have the quantity on the horizontal axis and the price on the vertical axis. All right. Uh, what else? The first graph is basically an average, a typical firm before the entry. The second graph is another, the same, uh, the same firm after the entry. So let's suppose some firms will enter and at the end, the new cost function is going to be different than the initial one, right? Because the costs has increased. And so I'm going to draw, uh, let's draw it now. Uh, let's suppose the average cost curve shifts up and the marginal cost curve also uh, shifts. And so this is where the new efficient scale is. Uh, after the entry. Well, obviously, I can't know what the new cost function will be unless I know exactly how many new firms will be uh, in the market. And this, the, the final graph is what ha should, uh, basically denotes what happens in the market. And so I have the dem market demand and market supply curves. So initially, the, the equilibrium is, is, is in, uh, in equilibrium, uh, meaning the supply and the demand curves intersect. And so this is the price. And this is the price where each firm gets zero profit or price equals the average cost. 
So now, for some reason, let's suppose the demand shifts to right. So this is new demand. So this is going to be the new quantity, right? New quantity. Oops, Q new. Well, this is going to be new price. And obviously, under this new price, a uh, firm is going to make positive profits. Do we need to indicate the region? No, not necessarily, but let's do it one more time. So if this is the market, new market price, the firm is going to produce this new output higher than the old one. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, and then the average cost is going to be this level and hence P minus average cost times quantity, uh, this region, is going to indicate the profit of this firm, an existing firm. Well, that is going to attract new firms, obviously. As new firms enter, the supply curve is going to shift to the right, right? Because there are more firms. As supply shifts right, how much? Well, if it shifts too much, well, some firms are going to make loss. And so in this case, they're going to exit. But in the long run, the supply should shift to the level where each firm should be making zero profit. Well, obviously, as new firms enter this supply curve, uh, after entry is going to shift up. As new firms enter and enter, these costs will shift up and up. And as some firms exit, these cost functions will shift down and down. So basically, there's going to be some, you know, back and forth. But in the end, in the long run, uh, there's going to be a, sort of a, a, a stable uh, outcome equilibrium where, let's suppose this is the final uh, average and the marginal cost curves. So therefore, price equals marginal cost is, is this point, uh, P new equilibrium. All right. So this is going to be the new market price. And so I don't look at this graph anymore because this was uh, before the entry. Now there are more operating firms in this market and hence the cost function of the same firm is now different. So I don't worry about this graph. But this is the new uh, long-run equilibrium price, which means the, 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 the new demand curve and the new supply curve must be intersecting at this point. All right, so this is S new. All right, so this is basically uh, Q in new equilibrium. So this is intermediate quantity. So let me erase it. So this is the final quantity. Well, initially, right, Q old, was this level. So P old, Q old was this level. And, and finally, after the entrance, uh, this is going to be the new price and new quantity. So if you do this exercise for different levels, what you will see is a supply curve in the long run, right? A supply curve meaning a, a, a relationship between price and uh, quantity uh, supplied. Well, but this time it's going to be not a flat line. It's going to be some increasing curve. All right, let's draw it something like this. So this is going to be a long run uh, uh, supply curve, LS. All right. So if you need to compare the constant cost, cost uh, scenario, the long run supply curve was flat. So if the costs increase, well, I'm going to have a sort of upward sloping supply curve. Um, which is kind of the standard supply curves we learn, right? The supply curves are, have, have upward slope. Uh, what if it is a decreasing cost? I mean, is it possible ever? Uh, it may be rare, but in fact, it is possible. How so? So let's suppose as new firms enter to this market, um, you know, new people, so let's say this is a small town, and so let's say there were, I don't know, 10, 15,000 people. And so as new firms enter, well, I don't know what they're producing, but as new firms enter, they attract new workers from neighboring cities or maybe from other parts of the country. And so the, uh, the number of workers uh, uh, increases as well. And or maybe additional firms uh, also bring additional know-how uh, and so maybe their technology is going to shift. You see what I mean? And so as a result of all this, in fact, the 
input costs may decrease and hence their costs, the average and the marginal cost curves may decrease. Well, what's going to be the impact of this? Well, obviously the final, the typical firms after entry, the cost curves are going to be below the old one, which means, I'm not going to draw this, but I think you can easily do it, which means the long run supply curve is not going to be upward sloping. It's not going to be flat, but it's going to be downward sloping. So that means a market may have downward sloping supply curve in the long run. And that's possible when the input prices, uh, prices decrease as the number of firms increase in the market. All right.